Okay, here we go. We got My name's Charlie Dark, and I grew up in South London. So I was looking, literally looking for ID magazine one day, and there was an article about this hairdresser called D-Mob that was in Soho. So I literally went there the next day and said, I'm from South London, and I'm black, and I'm young, and you haven't got any black people from South London working in your shop, so you should give me a job, because I'm just going to make the place look cool. I can just stand in the doorway. First customer was Malcolm McLaren. He gave me the best piece of advice that anyone's ever given me, which is basically, if you want something done, or you want to do something, you should just go and do it. Uh, illustrious musical past. Uh, he's part of an amazing crew called Black... What are they cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Attica Blues. Uh, we signed to Sony and they did great things. But uh, I managed to persuade him to dust off his music making equipment and he's done an amazing remix for us. And this is the TP. So... I started at the Blues kind of virtually just after leaving uni. I kind of had an epiphany in Groove Records. I don't have a gold chain. I've never held a gun in my life. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a flash car. I live in a bedroom that is six foot by six. I need to kind of make some records reflecting the life that I'm living in the UK. And, you know, harking back to the, the advice from Malcolm McLaren is if you can't do it, then you just have to do it yourself. I just thought to myself, I'm going to go make some records. <laughs> um, the first race that I ever did was a 5K in Battersea Park. Went to a running shop to try and get my running shoes. And it was kind of like going into a record shop back in the 80s. Because it was very much like, you don't look like a runner, so we're not going to really deal with you in a serious manner. You just stand over there, and then when we're ready to deal with you, you know, because you actually don't really know what you're talking about. And I just suddenly thought to myself, there must be a thousand people like me, you know, and it is, after all, you know, the 2000s. Why are we still kind of dealing with running like it's chariots of fire? You know, I'm not going to wear little racing shorts. I'm not going to wear a little white vest. I'm not going to grow a moustache, you know. I live in East London and I like running and I want people to deal with me, you know. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start my own crew. And so I thought, right, I'm listening to a lot of reggae at the moment and there's this crew called the Scare Them Crew. Right, run them crew. Right, brilliant. Um, so let's find this out. Who's running move? Um, Greyhounds? You can take Greyhounds. You've got the sleeves on, professional. Run them crew has now been going for three years. We have over 150 people who are part of the crew. As time has gone on, the crew has become a lot more serious about its approach to running and kind of, and I think that's only a natural thing as you get into something, you start to enjoy it more. You want to kind of, you know, Go faster, go further, be better. I started running at night, basically. I think that London transforms itself at night into another city. You see different characters, you see different people, you notice different sights, you hear different sounds, you smell different smells. And so, therefore, nighttime is the time when, kind of, when I love running through London most. The idea of the collective is important to me because you're always more powerful in a group than you are as an individual. I'd say with the running, it's kind of, in order to be a good runner, I don't necessarily think that it's something that you can do as an individual. I think you have to have a support team. 